coach. Very fortunate. I was like 23, 24. And, um, you know, I was able to see and work with some athletes, some NBA athletes coming off the lockout. And I had never worked with athletes that were 6'7", six, 6'8", seven, six, seven feet, 7'2". Seven, and I'm like, huh. You know, the squat pattern does look dramatically different. And there's no way they're getting to full depth, right? Because as you mentioned first, they might have 25%, you know, more time under tension. So instead of 10 reps, you know, that might be, you know, a dramatically different experience than what something else is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, as far as um, force feeding certain lift patterns and as far as looking at athletes as our sort of our, our, our guideline, a lot of times we forget that a lot of these people are also just freaks of nature in the first place. So yes, yeah. they might not have the range of motion and there's a certain range of motion that might not be compatible with certain lifts. That's where those modifications come in. So, you know, I'll be hard pressed to find too many NBA strength coaches out there who are still using a barbell deadlift from the floor with their athletes in the NBA. Right. I can guarantee you that it's not happening. And I know enough NBA strength coaches who can confirm that this is not happening anymore. Right. The trap bar, the pin pull or rack pull, whatever you want to call it. They're pulling from elevated surfaces. They're pulling with a neutral grip. They're pulling with a cradle surrounding them instead of a bar in front of them, etc. All those different things are going to keep an athlete healthy so they can play their sport without without pain, without injury. Right. And so when we take a page out of the good books when it comes to athlete training like that because it's going to be very sophisticated and smart mods so that they can stay on the court and stay on the field stay on the ice and so when we take the page out of their book in that regard it's the best thing that we could do for ourselves but at the same time if we look at only the flashy stuff that's out there this person training like an animal, training like a beast, doing stuff relentlessly, um, even getting away with poor form and technique because you see that a lot as well in the athletic world. We have no to remember doubt. These are athletes who are A, freaks of nature for the most part, but B, they've been doing this sport at such a high level for so long that they can probably get away with 10 times the amount of bad form repetitions because the durability that they've built up in their bone structure and their tendons, their ligaments, their muscles, they're not sitting at a desk for eight hours a day and then going to the gym at the end of the day for an hour and a half. That's not how their life goes, right? Um, not to mention that most athletes aren't 45 or whatever years old. They're probably like 23 and 26. So no a little doubt. bit of a difference there too as far as wear and tear and mileage and all that stuff goes. But we get the idea here, right? We got to really make sure that we... We, we put a little bit of a, a grain of salt next to the things that we see online when we see footage of athletes training and whatnot we take the right things away from it because there's a lot of good to be taken away from it but we could also misuse a lot of the, the things that we take away from it and uh you know misapply it to us when we shouldn't really fit the same category did you find this helpful if so pound that like button and hit subscribe now if you want a free copy of our chiseled muscle cheat sheet the no bs way to help you lose body fat and build lean muscle in 90 days make sure that you go to the description below and download your free copy. Any questions, drop them in the comments and can't wait to see you with the next video.